guys, so I am here today to talk to you about a selection of non-fiction books, specifically on ancient history. Doesn't really get more specific than that. The books I have to show you to here today cover a variety of different topics from ancient history, from Greece to Rome, from religion to food, and places in between. A lot of you have um, expressed an interest in the classics and in ancient history when um, commenting on my videos or um, tweeting me, so I thought an idea might be to share with you a selection of books and authors which will provide an excellent beginning or even middle um, to your uh, foray into ancient history. A few notes to make on the books I'm going to talk to you about. All of these books are written by uh, professional scholars, people who have doctorates and are experts in their field. You can therefore be guaranteed that they are well researched academic books um, which have been well vetted by their peers. They are not however inaccessible and this is why I picked them. None of them are large reference books, they're all books that can be easily consumed from beginning to end that you can read from cover to cover and get something from and enjoy. Although here and there there may be references to things that you haven't come across before, they are all books which present their research and their history and their lessons in a fashion which makes them accessible to people of all different knowledge um, ranges. They are for everybody, they are for the complete noob to the um, expert and hopefully you will find something you enjoy in this pile that will um, help you get into or just further your knowledge of ancient history. But let's begin with probably the broadest of all of the books I have here and that is the Classical World, An Epic History of Greece and Rome by Robin Lane Fox. This is published by Penguin. And Robin Lane Fox is just a, a, a person of epic proportions. He is absolutely fabulous. I don't know how many of you watch University Challenge. Um, I'm a big fan of the show and he was on this year's um, Celebrity Christmas Special series and his team won which I was, I was very happy about. Anyway, off topic. I mean, the title pretty much says it all for this one, An Epic History of Greece and Rome. This book spans over 1,000 years of ancient history. We learn about the um, invention of democracy in ancient Greece. It then takes you to the Roman Republic, the Civil War in Rome, which then led to the Roman Empire, and onwards. If you're not sure what happened, back in ancient times, who the Greeks were, who the Romans were, why they matter, what you even might find interesting amongst that large, large period of history, then this is a book for you. It isn't terribly short, it is just over 600 pages. This is definitely one for everybody and may very well be the beginning of your journey into the past. If you are however wondering why on earth I'm even making this video and why on earth you should bother reading about ancient history or the classics, then I think you need to check out Mary Beard. Mary Beard is probably one of the most well-known ancient historians and classicists today. She is somebody that um, you may know even if you have never delved into ancient history in your life before. She has quite the media presence and she is a phenomenal woman. Um, so much respect for this woman for various different reasons and she has some fantastic books. One in particular is her book that came out a couple of years ago now and is published by Profile Books. It is Mary Beard's Confronting the Classics, a provocative tour of what is happening now in classics. And this is definitely for those of you that have a slight interest in classics and ancient history but don't really know much, want to find out what it's all about. Those of you that are thinking of maybe studying classics or ancient history but honestly don't have that much background information, this is the book for you. And this one isn't actually terribly long. It's under 300 pages. It split up into a wide variety of different topics giving you a small insight into various different ancient cultures much farther back than even um, the Athenian democracy. It goes back as far as the Minoans and the island of Crete and Knossos. There is of course a heavy emphasis as well on Rome in this book. Mary Beard's expertise are in Rome although I'm pretty sure she just knows everything. This book will not only give you the 
beginnings of an insight into ancient history. It will also give you an insight into the history of the study of ancient history, in archaeology, in literature, etc, etc. And yeah, just go check out Mary Beard if you want to read some ancient history. Which brings me to my next book, which is her latest book, Mary Beard's latest book, SPQR, A History of Ancient Rome. If you want to know about ancient Rome, this is a book for you. Like I said, Mary Beard's um, speciality is ancient Rome. So, if you've ever wanted to know anything about ancient Rome, this is a book for you. A bit of a chunker. This one being um, just over 500 pages. However, Mary Beard's writing is incredibly accessible. She does a phenomenal job of writing about things and explaining things in a way that um, makes them incredibly interesting. It definitely brings out their interesting qualities. And um, if you're ever worried that ancient history is dull, then Mary Beard. People, Mary Beard. And this one goes as far back as the creation sort of myths and legends surrounding Rome, how the city was apparently founded, and 1,000 years after that, we are however about to return to ancient Greece with the man that is Paul Cartledge. Now, ancient Greece was not a country in the sense of how we think of a country now. It was a collection of different city-states with very different political institutions and setups, and they went to war with each other, and yeah, they <laughs> they were certainly not one community. And um, although. I talk a lot about Athens, I certainly do most of my research in, in Athens. Um, somewhere that I know a lot of people find incredibly interesting and um, there is an excellent book about is Sparta. And this is The Spartans, an epic history by Paul Cartledge. One that's definitely, definitely readable from beginning to end, less than 200 pages, just over 250. So not even terribly long for a non-fiction book. And The Spartans are one of those particularly elusive but incredibly interesting cultures. They definitely stand out amongst the Greek city-states as a very individual culture. There's not a lot of groups of people like the ancient Spartans, who are of course famous for being a somewhat of a warrior race. And I think you're bound to come across discussions of Athens in almost any Greek history book because they are the inventor's democracy. They do have the most texts surviving, but the Spartans, um, slightly more elusive, like I said, so. I will mention as well though, if you really want something little to begin with, if you really want to start at the beginning of Ancient Greece and get a very short introduction, then there is Ancient Greece, a very short introduction by Paul Cartledge. This is from the Oxford um, Short Introduction series and I thought I'd mention this because it is by Paul Cartledge, who is a phenomenal Greek historian. The next up is one of my all-time favourite scholars um, and he has written a lot of books on various different topics and edited a lot of books on various different topics and translated a lot of pieces of classical literature that I love. But this is an ancient history video, it is not a classical lit video. So I wanted to mention his new book, which is Battling the Gods, Atheism in the Ancient World. This one, very kindly, is another one under 300 pages. And in this book, Tim Whitmarsh looks across Mediterranean cultures in antiquity to various different people who decided to say no to the um, established gods. Now, there are lots of different forms of atheism in antiquity. A lot of ancient atheism isn't even a denial of the possibility of gods, but often a denial of their importance or significance in people's lives. It comes in various different extremes and is definitely a topic that, although discussed, is certainly not at the forefront of ancient history and I am really pleased to see this book was released this year. I've been looking forward to it for quite some time since I knew it was coming out and like I said Tim Whitmarsh, one of my favourite scholars and another that just writes about antiquity in an incredibly engaging manner. So would highly recommend this one. But I do have two more books to talk to you about. The first being, I do have two last books to talk to you about, and the first being Goddesses, Whores, Wives and Slaves by Sarah B. Pomeroy. Now if you've ever wanted to know about women in antiquity, Pomeroy is your women. She is one of the leading experts in the studies of women in antiquity. Her book, Goddesses, Whores, Wives and Slaves, um, has made incredible strides in this field and is incredibly important to anybody interested in this field, but it's also 
just a fantastic read. She's another one that just has really accessible, engaging writing. In fact, my um, first year textbook for Greek world in um, university was edited and included some um, writing by Sarah Pomeroy. This book looks at women's lives and the different roles women occupied in um, Greek and Roman culture. Um, we start in Bronze Age Greece and go all the way down to the Roman Empire. The book tries to include women from the upper classes right down to the lower classes and slaves. There's a really good general overview of the different walks of life of women in various different areas of the Mediterranean and in various different times of antiquity. Really excellent book, another one around 250 pages and one that you can definitely get through quite quickly. But my last book is a book for those of you that have any interest in ancient Athens and in general Greece and that is Courtesans and Fish Cakes by James Davidson, The Consuming Passions of Classical Athens and this book looks at a few different topics, all of which help us get a better understanding of the passions, pursuits and interests of people living in classical Athens. It talks about food, it talks about desire, sex, the sex industry, politics, everyday life. There is a lot in here and this is one of the most engaging, well written, for everybody ancient history books I have ever read. I remember this being mentioned in the first ever lecture I had in my first year of university as just an amazing book to read and then it kept coming up year after year in different lectures because although almost anybody can read this book and get something from this book it offers really valuable information that makes it amazing for people of all different levels noobs to experts like I said and I think a really really fun and interesting one to start with if you do have an interest specifically in ancient Greek history and the infamous city of Athens. Those are all the books I wanted to recommend to you in this video though. Hopefully one of those sounded interesting to you and you found a place to start with ancient history or found your next stepping stone. I mean we all know I am passionate about ancient history and adore ancient history and we'd love more of you to um, experience the joy of ancient history. There is no history that is quite like studying ancient history. I mean obviously some people are going to disagree with me. I'm not saying it's the best but it, it stands out as very very individual and fascinating. I would highly recommend checking out some ancient history books. You may find that before now you thought you were not a history buff and had no interest in history. Um, you might change your mind though if you take a look into ancient history. It really does have something special to offer. But do let me know if you have any favourite ancient history books that um, anybody can enjoy in the comments down below so that I can check them out and um, the people watching this video can check them out. But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!